And I'd like to give you just a short uh, talk regarding not a disease process, but a radiographic finding that of free intraperitoneal air. It's also known as pneumoperitoneum. And it's an important finding on imaging because it often implies disruption of the wall of the viscous. Most common etiologies are post-surgical. In fact, post-surgical free intraperitoneal air is the most common etiology we see in day-to-day -day practice. But perforation can also be due to peptic ulcer disease, bowel obstruction with bowel perforation, diverticulitis, and a variety of other uh, GI diseases, period. It's also important clinically to differentiate surgical from benign or incidental free intraperitoneal air. Benign causes include pneumatosis intestinalis, which can occur in the setting of long-term steroid use and COPD, in which there is gas in the wall of the bowel that can escape into the peritoneal cavity, but the patients are asymptomatic. Um, gynecologic ma manipulation can cause free intraperitoneal air, and air can also enter the peritoneal cavity from intrathoracic causes, such as a, um, a pneumothorax or pneumomediastinum. Often, pneumoperitoneum or free intraperitoneal air is detected on a con conventional radiograph, and I'd like to review some of the findings on conventional radiographs because um, these findings can often be subtle. The, if there's clinical concern for bowel perforation, the most sensitive and specific examination is computed tomography, and if there are indeterminate findings on Conventional radiographic images, CT scan may be indicated to clarify these findings. So the most specific um, and easy to identify finding is that of subdiaphragmatic gas. So this is an AP chest radiograph. The patient has a nasogastric tube. You can see this shadow represents the diaphragm with atelectatic lungs superior to the diaphragm. And inferior to the diaphragm is a lucency representing gas. There's gas superimposed between the diaphragm and the liver surface. You also see a similar finding beneath the left hemidiaphragm. Um, this is the wall of the stomach that contains an NG tube. And again, lung, thin diaphragm, and gas seen beneath the diaphragm. It's important to note that this finding is really only well identified if the patient is upright and um, free intraperitoneal air can be very diffi or difficult or even invisible on supine chest radiographs. Another imaging sign is that of the continuous diaphragm sign. Normally on conventional chest radiographs you do not appreciate the normal central portion of the diaphragm but often that is the highest portion of the diaphragm so on an upright view the free intraperitoneal air will accumulate centrally, and you will see continuous diaphragm from the right to the left. A finding that can be seen on supine radiographs is that of the double wall sign, and that is due to the, the, the um, bow wall being outlined both by endoluminal and extraluminal gas. So the, the double wall sign of these loops of small bowel on this study, you're able to appreciate both sides of the wall and you can only see the external or uh, portion of the bowel if it is outlined by gas. So there's endoluminal air, extraluminal air, and bowel wall. For comparison, there is a loop of small or loop of colon here you can see air within the lumen, but you cannot appreciate the outer wall. It's careful to evaluate the uh, thickness and look for the findings of double wall sign away from adjacent loops of bowel. Th this case is not a double wall, or this region is not a double wall sign. This is merely just a loop of bowel and a loop of bowel, and then these are two interposed bowel walls.
Another finding can be seen on the supine image is that of a triangle sign. Again, this is caused by gas on both sides of the bow wall. A triangular shape lucency is not typically seen in, uh, with, due to its acute angles within the small bow. So a triangle of gas is highly suspicious for extraluminal air. And then just um, a sample image of a CT scan demonstrating a large amount of free intraperitoneal air. It is much easier to determine the location of the free intraperitoneal air in the CT scan due to the better spatial resolution. This is a slip of diaphragm and a large amount of free intraperitoneal air partially outlining this lupus small bowel.